floss tube. This is Stephanie, the Ivy House Crafter. It is May 3rd, Thursday, 2018. Happy Mania! Stitch Mania, the crazy time of the year when a bunch of people start a whole bunch of projects. And I'll get into my mania in a little while. Um, welcome to my viewers, my subscribers. If you're near here, if you're new here, welcome. If you have been watching me for a while, welcome. Um, I love all of my, my viewers and subscribers and likers. I don't think I've had any dislikers, but I could always go back to my other videos and check and see. I like you guys too, if there are any. Um, wanted to address something that was a little irritating and embarrassing from my last video. I had put my hair up in a... Um, what's it called? Headband. Um, and what I didn't realize was that, well, didn't realize until I watched back my video, that showed off my lovely bald spot on the top of my head. Um, I had a basal cell carcinoma removed last year and it left a scar about this big where no hair grows and so I have a comb over and I was thinking that the the headband would pull my hair back and cover that and instead it pulled my hair back and showed it off so every time I looked down boop there was my little baldy scar so now you know and you know, it was a little bit embarrassing, but it's better to have a scar than to have a carcinoma. So there's that. Take care of your skin, people. Including, you know, spots where you might not think about. Because, yeah, when I was growing up, I would put sunscreen face, arms, legs, shoulders, back, all that stuff. But... I was continually getting sunburned on the top of my head because I didn't want to put sunscreen in my hair. I didn't wear a hat. I didn't like the way I looked in a hat. And so, skin cancer. So yeah, take care of your skin. That is my PSA for today. Let's move into whips because um, there was a few days of my video rotation week that came before Stitch Mania, so I did work on some whips. The first one, I worked a bit on Roses on White Chair. This is my Dimensions kit. One of the notes that I gave myself after watching the video last time and um, pretty much all my videos, I, I wrote down, hold things still, because I'll be like, yep, yeah, here it is, and you know, la la la. So, holding things still so that when you look up from your stitching, you can see it. So yeah, I'm working on that. And you might or might not be able to see any progress from here, but I, I did, I think, I honestly don't really even remember everything that I did. Not a whole lot. I think I put in a bit of some whites in the um, ah, in the pot in here, silver or white or something, I don't know. But I also did some flowers, some, let's see, these pink half stitches that are like right here and you know, I filled those in and some of these outlying flowers. Just making little bits of progress here and there. Um, so yeah, just to show the whole thing. It's coming along nicely. I'm enjoying it when I get it out, even though the Ada is a little bit stiff, but yeah, this is just going to be beautiful when it's done. I really like it. Okay, set that down. Another whip. I have been working on Spring House. Complimentary pattern from Brooks Books. 
part of the House for All Seasons collection. This is a really fun one. And today, or not today, this week, I worked on filling in some these purple flowers along the, um, the bottom corners. And I think I did a little bit on the birdhouse. A lot of stitchers on floss tube say when they get some purple they, um, they avoid it or they switch out the colors. I have no problems whatsoever with purple. I like purple. It's a pretty color. And so this is all exactly as called for. And yeah, this is coming along nicely. I don't know when I'll get to work on either of these again because I am working so much on um, Mania, I say as it's three days into it. But um, those were my whips for this week. I also had a finish and this was Deer in the Woods. I love how it turned out. I had to frog it some things a few times. I had to, you know, I mentioned last time that I had to frog along the bottom because I had put this part too high. And um, then I was putting these words in and I realized I put them over here instead of over here. And so I had to frog those. And I was getting a little frustrated. I was like, you'd think that since it's my design that I made, I could do it without frogging all the time. But I eventually got it done. And I am so in love with this teeny tiny little finish. It's so cute. It is so cute. My little cameraman over here. Well, he's not so little. My cameraman is saying it's so cute. Um, and... Um, I was really excited about this. Somebody saw my picture on Instagram and was like, I love it. Where's the pattern? And so I linked to my Etsy shop and she bought the pattern and has already stitched it and everything. And um, cross stitching has various levels of, this is super awesome. Um, buying patterns, super awesome. And um, it's exciting to to stitch up a pattern, and, you know, to see a pattern and then to be able to see it come to life. That's super awesome, uh, you know, as you stitch it. There's designing a pattern. It's so fun to, you know, click or tap on a screen and, and or color it in, in graph paper or whatever and see a pattern that you're visualizing in your head come to life on paper or on the screen. That's super awesome. Um, taking that pattern and, and stitching it, uh, it up yourself, so amazing, you know, to know that I created this pattern and then I, I stitched this pattern and it's just like, I did that. And then there's a whole other level of super awesome, amazing to see somebody else stitch something that I designed. and. This was the first time that I saw somebody make something that I designed and it just like, I am, I am as proud of that piece that she did as I am of the one that I stitched. So, um, I, dang it, I should remember her, um, Instagram handle. I will link it below if you want to go, go check it out and see. Um, I did mine one over one on 28 count. I'm pretty sure she did two over two. And so hers is twice as big. Um, and she used her own colors because she didn't have the called for and just wanted to get it started right away. But oh, it was just so neat to see somebody else stitch my design. And she did it in like two days, two or three days. Just zoomed right through it. I'm like, you stitched yours faster than I stitched mine. Awesome. So, so yeah, that's my finish. Mom. And somebody else's finish, too. So, super exciting. Yes, Audrey. Can I 
have a pickle? You want a pickle? Yes, you can have a pickle. We're gonna try to edit that. She part likes out. pickles. No, I'm not gonna edit that out. This is life. My children love pickles. Pickles. <laughs> okay. I. Okay, um, I'm part of the great Biscornu Swap that's run by Jennifer Upton. Um, I will link the, the group, the Facebook group, down below. And I was going to start my Biscornu May 1st, but I got impatient and I started it for Sunday high tea instead. So that the last Sunday in April I started it. And um, I'm not going to show it because it's a secret swap and so I'm not, I'm not going to show it. But I did want to show it's the perfect size to fit in this little project bag uh, that I made. I've shown this before but it didn't have anything in it at the time. Because, um, you know, it's just a it little piece of fabric like and like three, three things of floss and the patterns on my phone. But I am going to show you the fabric, half of the fabric, let me unfold it, there we go, it is Raspberry Light Joblin, 28 count, Audrey, out of the corner please, okay, live, <laughs> so, so that's fun, um, and and yeah, I've started that. I'll go ahead and show the, the floss colors too, because I might as well. These are not, they're not um, DMC. These are the, the cheap stuff that I got from Amazon. Yes, Audrey? Can you open this? Okay. Life. <laughs> proverbial pickle jar is an actual pickle jar. There we go. Thank you. Okay. There we go. All right, I'm going to try to show the floss on the fabric. There we go. Isn't that so cute? It's going to be very pretty. Mention the needle minders. Yes, I'm going to mention the needle minders. Um, I forgot to mention last time, but I made a few needle minders because I was like, well, I need lots of needle minders for, um, lots for of Stitch projects. Mania. Lots of projects. Yes, lots of projects. So this was one of them that I made. Um, I bought a strand of, of beads at Joann's. They were on sale. Let's see. There we go. And I, I made, I think, three or four of these needle minders with these beads. I haven't decorated my Altoid tin yet, but I am using it. Here are my needle minders. Okay, this one, this guitar pick, is this the guitar pick? This one? Yep. Okay. So, um, it was that from is, someone else. Yeah, that is from Jennifer Upton. Um, she sells these guitar pick needle minders in her Etsy shop. I will link it below. These black things, these are actually um, magnetic snaps or magnetic closures that I got. They're for like purse making and stuff. Um, but that was my first needle minders. And, you know, I still use them occasionally, but now that I have pretty ones, I don't really want to. So, let's see. I got a, a strand of these star beads. There's, there's a lot more. There's more colors, but these are the ones that I made um, into needle minders because I like these, these, I like these colors. And, you know, there's more of these. This one is, yeah, this one is the back to the needle minder that Jennifer Upton sent. She puts these, these fun gem magnets on the back of her needle minders. And then there is this one. 
this one came from the fairy garden section at Joann's and I just fell in love with it. It is so cute. <coughs> it's a little spice cabinet and it has nutmeg, parsley, ginger, cinnamon, basil, and paprika. And then, you know, it says spices on the top and it's so adorable. There's also a flower. Philip, if you're gonna be back there, you gotta be quiet. I actually haven't used this one as a needle minder yet. It's just kind of in there making my little tin really pretty. Cause when I put the needle, when I put the needle on, it tends to like kind of get stuck down in this little crevice. So it's not the best needle minder, but it's really cute and I like it even if I don't use it. Cause I just, I open this up and it makes me smile. So those are the needle minders that I've got. Boys, quiet. Okay, another thing that I made, finally, I had some fabric that Jennifer Upton sent me quite a while ago. And then um, in a previous video, I showed that I had made most of the front of the project bag out of that fabric. The project bag is now completed. And this is how it turned out. It's got orts on the back. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. Here's the back. And so yeah, it's just this adorable little woodland deer with woodland scene and its antlers. And if you notice, it's got little like acorns and stuff. And so the charm, I can't see what you're doing with your hand down. Okay, this way, this way, this way, good, this way. <laughs> He's making little hand signals so that I can make sure that you can see what you're supposed to see. But it's got this adorable little acorn charm. And I thought that that was just so perfect for this fabric. And I still have a lot of this fabric left, so I'm probably going to make at least one more uh, project bag out of this. I wanted to try a couple other styles of project bags. I, I want to try the, the Vanna Pfeiffer um, envelope bag. I want to try just a simple bag that's the zipper on top, because that's a lot easier to make. Um, Stitch Mania is providing me with a good excuse to make more bags. I just need to put down my stitching long enough to do so. So we'll see how that goes. Okay, now is the point in the program when we talk about... I was about to say Stitch Mania, but I looked at my notes and there's one more thing. Um, if you have been watching for a while, you might remember the the piece that I did for my aunt. She has metastatic stage four breast cancer. And I designed and stitched a special piece that was a song that she and her husband would sing together. And um, they say they would sing it together since they were dating. They they've been singing it together since they were dating. They can't anymore because she's lost her voice because of a tumor around her aortic valve that has paralyzed her um, her vocal cords or laryngeal nerve or um, I don't remember the exact details but they can't sing it anymore she can't but it was really really special I was able to deliver it to her in person and she was really happy about it and my uncle got teary eyed when he saw it anyway I said um, here on my channel that once I got it charted out in a way that made it available to share, I would offer that pattern for free, anybody who wants it, because it is um, a special memorial piece and I just wanted that to be something that I could share with anybody who would like to stitch it. And it's done. I've got it. Um, I have it shared on Google Drives. Here is what it looks like. I had to, um, 
I had to change things around a little bit to make things more centered. The way that I stitched it, I was going off of a paper pattern that I put together and it wasn't like the best quality. Um, some things were, were off center and so it's, it's a little bit off, but I, I fixed all of those things in this, in the program that I used on the computer to create this, this version of the pattern. And so it is available and I will link below to the, the Google Drive um, document, whatever, the PDF, so that anybody who would like to stitch that will be able to. Keep your feet away from the tripod so that you don't jostle the camera. Thank you, buddy. All right, now is the point in the program when we move on to Stitch Mania. Look at me doing all the, the kitten stitcher singing to get to a new segment. That's her thing, I'm not gonna steal it, but. Um, I decided what I'm gonna do as far as floss tube for Stitch Mania is every night I will do a short film that talks about what I've started and shows it um, close up and, and you can see you know what the piece will look like and the progress that I it's okay Thomas and the progress that I have made on it that day after starting it so this is day third Thomas it's okay she can be in here He's trying to distract the cat away from me. Um, so, I have videos that I did for day one and day two. So I am going to insert both of those right here. Okay, day one of Stitch Mania. Sorry, the camera's moving around. I don't have it on a tripod or anything. Uh, um. My very first start for Stitch Mania 2018 is this lovely piece that I designed. It's called Wild Lily's Flourish. I have been so eager to start this piece. Um, I finished it, you know, finished designing it a bit ago, I think, I don't remember what day it was, but, um, okay, so it's after midnight, so my brain isn't working super fast right now, so I'm sorry if I pause, but, yes, I've just been so eager to get started on this, and then... Suddenly, it was May. May just kind of like crept up on me, and I don't know if it was my anxiety kicking in or what, but I was suddenly just like really nervous to start. I mean, I had everything ready. I had my fabric, all my floss was bobbinated. I even had my nice little project bag finished. Isn't it pretty? But, um... I was I was really nervous and anyway I, I pushed through it and I got started and and now I don't want to stop hence you know that that's why it's after midnight because I just I wanted to keep going and going but um, so yeah I hope I don't end up getting like nervous and scared to start for every single piece because that will not make for a very fun month for me but um, yeah so here is my progress on Wild Lily's Flourish I got pretty far um, half of the quote and I went ahead and started in on the border because I wanted to do another color and I wanted to, you know, just see how 
See how stitching this part up goes. So let's get in a little bit closer. I am doing this um, one over one on 18 count. The last time I used 18, 18 count, I did two over one, but um, I wanted it to have kind of a a sparse threadbare look to it so that it looks a little bit older and let's get really close sorry about the shadow there my lighting it being after midnight my lighting is not ideal but um, I really like the effect that it has and I'm just I am so in love with this piece already and looking forward to being able to continue working on this as time permits. So yeah, while lilies flourish, day one of Stitch Mania 2018. Okay, it is May 2nd. So, Stitch Mania, day two. Sorry for jiggling the camera. Today I started this super cute Minecraft ABC pattern. And this is by Happy Cupcake Creation. Or Creations. Um, here's the, the link. The, her blog is happycupcakecreations.blogspot.com and um, the Etsy shop, Happy Cupcake Creation. This is a free pattern. Um, I, th I think it's a she, it might be he, but um, I'm just gonna say she. Um, created some cross stitch patterns and sold them for a while in her shop, but then moved to other fun fan art type things, um, plushies and stuff, and so decided to offer the patterns on her blog for free. So this is the Minecraft ABC pattern. My kids have been really excited about me stitching this. I don't play Minecraft. Um, I'm not super enthusiastic about it, but the kids play it and my husband plays it and they're all like, oh, that's so cool, and, and axe and bucket and creeper and diamond and, and you know, they, they can list like all of these things and I'm like, oh, okay, that's nice. I'll stitch it because you guys like it. <laughs> um, so yeah, I started that one today and this is the progress that I made. I started with the border. Let me get closer here. Some of the spaces are blank because I realized that I am missing a color. I thought that I had gotten all of the floss I needed for this pattern and um, the other ABC pattern from Happy Cupcake Creations that I'll be starting another day, but apparently I missed one. And so there is a kind of dark gray that's missing here. Some of these spaces are actually not spaces, they're like white stitches, but there are some that are empty and that's going to be a darker gray. But um, I kind of thought that this pattern would be a little bit tedious and I um, you know yesterday I was you know my anxiety kicked in I, I was kind of scared to start the wild lilies flourish that I started yesterday but um, I, I had been concerned that I was going to continue to experience that anxiety of starting Happily, I did not this time. I don't know if maybe it's because I wasn't as excited to start this, and so it wasn't as big of a deal. But um, yeah, I thought that it was going to be kind of tedious and that I wasn't really going to enjoy it a whole lot, but 
working on this border, for some reason, I just, I found it really enjoyable. I had a lot of fun with this border and I'm glad that it's not done because I can still go around here and then down here and over here. So, um, yeah, I really enjoyed working on this border. I it's, um, confetti, but not too much confetti. It's full coverage, but only four stitches wide. So, um, and the, and the colors, some of them are a little bit vibrant. The, you know, the, that turquoise is really bright. This lighting is bad because it's late at night, but, um, it's a, a vibrant blue, but it's offset by these grays, and gray is my, my jam. I love gray. Um, so anyway, I enjoyed stitching that border, and then when I finished page one of all the colors except for the one I was missing, I moved on to this axe, and I really like how it turned out. It's just super cute. I like... Sorry for the shadow. I wish that I... I don't know. I wish I had better lighting in the middle of the night. Go figure. But um, I like the handle of this axe. The the three diagonal rows of like brown and light brown and black. I don't know. I just think it looks really cool. So A for axe. Um, this is part of diamond letter D. This particular color I, after I did the outline of the axe, I had some left on the on the needle, and it was too much to throw away, but not really enough to make it worth wrapping back around the, on the bobbin, so I just carried it over to the next place where I used it and, you know, used up that bit of floss. So, anyway, this piece was really fun to work on more fun than I was expecting and I'm excited to be able to work on it again at some point. Okay, day two, Stitch Mania 2018. Welcome back. You will have seen days one and two. For me that was really weird. I just paused for a few seconds and I'm back. Um, so yeah, Day one, I did Wild Lily's Flourish. I wanted to mention in here, um, talking about you know my pattern, my design, my shop, and stuff like that. I don't intend for this channel to become a shop tube. Um, I am going to talk a lot about things that I design, things that are available in my Etsy shop, but. That's just because those are things that I'm excited about, things that I'm stitching on. I, I just want this to be a regular <coughs> floss tube. And um, the fact that I happen to sell the patterns, you know, some of the patterns that I'm stitching, you know, that it is what it is. But I'm, I'm not going to turn this into, you know, every single floss tube is a go to my Etsy shop and buy all my things. Because that's not the kind that, that I want to watch, and um, that's not the kind of, of floss tube that I want to be. So this isn't going to turn into a shop tube. It's floss tube. I'll talk about my whips, my finishes, my you know purchases, things I'm working on, and you know that's that's what my channel is about. So that being said, I have an Etsy shop. Go buy all my things. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but um. So I haven't started my day three project yet, but I'm going to show you what it is. This is one that I'm so excited about. I've been excited about since I got this book. This is Brenda Key's Traditional Samplers. And some of these are um, patterns that she has reproduced. Um, And some are designs that she has made that are 
in the um, in the style of these these early samplers. I think that this one is a reproduction. No, um, let's see. I'll read the description. It's it's birds sampler. Birds have been featured on birds have featured on samplers from the early 17th century, usually atop a bush, tree, or house, sometimes in rows or in a single decorative motif. The border for this sampler is based on a Dutch design dated 1843. It is unusual for such big birds to play as large a part in this as this in a border design, but symmetrically placed, they give a wonderful sense of balance to an already pretty border. So, here is the birds sampler that I will be starting today. I've been looking forward to this like crazy. So excited to start this. It's got birds all over the place. And yeah, I'm just really, really excited to be starting this one. The fabric will be 32 count lamb's wool jolin <coughs> even weave. It's just this nice neutral color. I've never worked on 32 count before, so it should be interesting. Most of the pattern is stitched 2 over 2. The words are 1 over 1. So that's going to be nice and tiny. The The smallest I've done is 1 over 1 on 28 count. And so this will be 1 over 1 on 32. Really teeny tiny. And here's the, here, the, the floss for that. Um, yeah, Thomas was telling me to turn it around so you can see. I wrote bird sampler on it, but um, muted colors, very samplery, very pretty. That one's going to be fun. So you will see the video for that one in next week's video. Um, so yeah, that is my stitch mania so far. It's only day three. I've got lots more starts to come, and it's gonna be fun. Um, let's see. Okay, so um, a while ago, Abby at Top Knot Stitcher had her thousand subscriber giveaway. <laughs> she is so much fun to watch. I love watching her videos. Um, and she, yeah, she is just a joy. And so, so yeah, she had a giveaway and I won and it was really exciting because there was just a lot of great stuff. And, mm. and then, mm. um, the package came. Ah. It's not where I was expecting it to be. <laughs> And holy cow, Abby, like there was so much like more in here than, than even she showed in her video of the giveaway. And I mean, this rustling, sorry, there's going to be rustling in this segment, but packed full of stuff. I can tell because so it's here is all of the amazing things that I won from Abby mm. Top Knot Stitcher. Oh. This is some seven <coughs> count fabric that Which she looks sent. Like big stitches. Yes, very big stitches. There's only seven <laughs> stitches per inch on this. Um, she thought, oh, I should have started with the note. Um, she sent a very sweet note. And the seven count, she said, um, I thought might be of use as more of your kids learn to stitch. So this can be fun for, for the kids to stitch on. Philip, my five-year-old, might even be able to stitch on this. Wouldn't that be fun? Yeah. Yeah. 
Oh, he's so, back here now. Let's see. She is really into um, avoiding throwing things away that could be reused. Um, so, like switching out reusables yeah. for disposables. And so she sent some tea towels that would be great. Holy cow, I'm getting a phone call. Okay. <coughs> so she sent these tea, to <clears throat> tea towels that can be used as paper towels, or in place of paper towels or napkins. I'm going to open those up. That is a fun geometric <coughs> design with some bright, cheery colors. Wow. And, and this one is floral. Floral. Floral, mm. that's the word for it. So, really pretty tea towels. And I was really excited about these. Metal straws. <coughs> so, those are fun. And, yeah, Thomas, 10-year-old. Uh, Philip, stop. Stop doing that thing with your throat, okay? He's like eyeing these, like, oh, I want one. I might let my kids use them on occasion, but these are mine. These are mine. <laughs> my kids like straws. I might have to get, I don't know. I don't want to say this with them right there because then they'll hold me to it, but I might have to get <clears throat> more metal straws because they, they love straws. Okay. What else? This adorable bag is Aww. this. Okay, Philip. It says, Hello, my old friends. And so, so it has, you know, the, the bear and the kitten. And then it has the back of the bear and the kitten on the back, which is really cute. And this is like deceptively soft. You wouldn't realize how soft it is, but it feels like it's made of like t-shirt fabric or something, but it's, I like soft fabrics and this is a soft fabric. Hey, kitty cat. Same dog. She's making her, her presence known. So, um, there is floss. She added, um, you know, Abby added, these were, were thrown in, um, just like at the very top, this was the first thing that I took out of the package when I found them. And then in the bag were these, this lovely collection of some of her favorite <coughs> neutrals. I'm a neutrals lover as well. And so I was really excited about that. And it's just some beautiful grays and a black. This really pretty cream color. So, so yeah, I love these colors. And these ones are pretty too. And I'm going to enjoy using these and think about Abby every time I do. And it also came with these two needles. So that's fun. There we two. Not one. Yep, there's two of them. Okay, what else is in this bad bag of goodies? Ah. Welcome home from Country Cottage Needleworks. I am going to have this be one of my Mania Starts. And, um, because my, my Stitch Mania plans are kind of like organic, they, they evolve. Um, I have a, a list of things that I would like to start, some are a higher priority than others, but um, I'm adding this to it. It is so cute with that little, you know, picket fence and the white house and everything. So I'm really excited about that. Also, 
to be added to my starts this month is the Spirit of Cross Stitch Angel Ornament from Brooks Books. It came with the beads. If I shake it, I can hear the beads. And it came with the perforated paper. So that is really exciting. And then it has the pictures of the other spirit of. There's spirit of knitting and spirit of quilting. And suddenly I'm like, maybe I need to get those too because they're really pretty. See how cute those ones are. Is it showing okay? There, there. It is. Now you can see how cute they are. <laughs> but yeah. So that will be another one of my mania starts later on this month. And possibly another one if I get around to it, but um, I will definitely stitch this at some time. I don't know if it will be May, but okay, stop messing with the camera. The chalkboard mandala. This was, I think, a, a past Ooh. the stash. And I don't think that I'm going to do it on dark fabric with white floss. I think I would rather do it on a light, kind of natural or, you know, the old fashioned beigey color with, I don't know what color floss yet, but, cause I'm not like a huge fan at this point of the, the chalkboard stitching, but this is a beautiful pattern and I'm going to love stitching it um, in my own colors. And then there is another pattern. This is the cabinet designed by Lisbeth Gottschall. It is a thistles pattern. Is there any um, glare on it? Can you see it okay, Thomas? I can see it. No, I think we're good. Okay. But yeah, this is so cute. It's got, it has a little cross stitch sampler within the cross stitch. It's ABC123 and it's got these little horse figurines to stitch and books and a game board and just so cute. Oh. And sewing supplies. There's a little basket with pin cushion and scissors. I am, I am just thrilled with this. And it's got a globe. I love globes. It's got a globe. So amazing. Let's see what else. Another pattern. Three patterns. Fancy. Little stockings. Look at how cute they are. And let me see. They are tiny. See how little that is? It's just like this little, sorry, flashing the pattern there. Little tiny. These are so adorable and they're going to be so much fun to stitch up as. Christmas decorations. Now they call for beads to write the the words and I might have mentioned in a previous video that I'm not thrilled with beading on cross stitch so I'm not going to do those as beads. I'm just going to I'll probably use some blending filament or, or um, you know some sort of chronic or metallic to to give it that shiny effect, but I'm not going to beat that. But that's going to be fun. And then more Christmas. A whole cross stitch Christmas creations book with all sorts of patterns. There's these little stocking um, advent thingies. There's ornaments and let's see 
I think I'm going to do this angel Christmas uh, angel Christmas tree topper. Um, right now we have a crocheted angel as a Christmas tree topper, but it's it's old and getting kind of ratty and and I think that this this one would just be really pretty. And nativity candle wrapper things. I love nativities. I get that from my mom. She loves nativities. So, so many really neat little patterns in here. Isn't Abby amazing? <clears throat> awesome stuff in here. Also, some perforated paper for, you know, doing some of these stiff cross stitch. These things. Um, there's a kind of a beige, tan, off white yellowy color and a white color. So that's really cool. I've never stitched on perforated paper before. I'm excited to give that a try. And then she added a storybook. She says, um, one of my, uh, I also added one of my favorite children's books for your family's library. So this is Miss I don't know how to say that name, Miss Rumpheus. 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 Rumpheus, that's the best way I can read it. Mm -hmm. I love the pretty flowers, and it just... There's a slender little kitty. Yep, 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 the little kitty. Cute little kitty. So, Cute that... Kitty, kitty. I'm, I'm really going to enjoy. My kids are going to enjoy. And it's, it's beautiful artwork. Makes me want to cross stitch something that looks like that. Anyway, so there, no more crinkles. That is what I received from Abby, Top Knot Stitcher. Abby, you are amazing and wonderful, and thank you so much. That was just happy mail, like, just that was great. Moving on, I had something fun to share. Um, uh, yesterday, I had all my cross stitch stuff set up in my room, just like spread out all over my bed so that I could, anytime I wanted to, just go in there, put in a length of floss without having to get everything set up and then put away when I was done and then come back out. Um, so I was in my room stitching and Matthew, my 18-month-old, was out here and in I the living room. And I found this camera. Okay. Shh. So Matthew was out here in the living room entertaining himself for a few minutes. And he found the camera. Which I, I realized... Managed to turn it on. Okay, Thomas, I'm, sh I'm telling the story. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, he played with the camera, he pushed buttons, he turned it on, he took a funny little selfie, he took some video. And it was so cute. I'm going to insert some of the video he took. Not all of it because that would like double the length of time of this this video, but um, And it was mostly sitting on the stairs. Yeah. So a lot of Doing it Doing nothing. Thomas um, he ended up dropping the camera down the stairs. Nothing was heard. It, it, the camera's fine. Um, but it was still filming, and so there's a lot of the camera just, like, sitting on the stairs, picking up all the background noises. But, but yeah, so I'm going to insert that video here. If camera movement bothers you, don't watch, but you can still listen because it's hilariously adorable. He's, like, singing and... Yeah, so that's right here.
Wasn't that stinking cute? Um, yeah, I love my little guy. He's funny. I wanted to just remind for anyone who's interested in doing the um, Saxon band sampler sal. Um, that is starting on June 1st. I know that there are other cells that are also starting that day. I think the Eliza Bell Cox is starting that day, but um, if you're into band samplers and, you know, stuff like that, I'll link the Facebook group below, and if you just want to follow it on, um, like, Instagram, I, um, I think the, the hashtag is just going to be Saxon Band Sampler Sal. So, um, again, that is the Sal that will be either the Saxon Transylvania Band Sampler or... the Ye old Band Sampler, or both. I'm going to be stitching both. And that is, yeah, that's starting June 1st, and I'm getting really excited about it. That'll be so much fun. So yeah, I started a couple videos ago, I, I, I said, I'm going to start asking a question at the end of every video, and then I promptly forgot about it. But I'm remembering this time, I'm asking a question. My question is, what is your favorite stitch count? You know, what is your favorite fabric count to stitch on? Um, my go-to tends to be 28 count. I just leave it alone. Um, but I'm, I'm kind of branching out. I have found 18 count to be really enjoyable. And, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm gonna be starting the bird sampler today on 32 count. And the Saxon band samplers are going to be on 25 count. So I'm, I'm trying lots of new things. 28 is still my favorite, it's my go-to, and I have lots of fabrics in size in, in 28 count. So, so what is your favorite stitch count? So, yeah. That is all that I have. This is probably going to be a longer video than usual. Nothing wrong with that. It's stitch mania. Let's get a little crazy. Let's do a longer video. It's still shorter let's than sit. Pam and Steph's. Let's so. sit here for hours. <laughs> no, it's not hours. Um, so, yeah. I will see you next week with seven more uh, Stitch Mania videos, hopefully. I'm going to my craft night, first Thursday of the month craft night tonight, and I'm going to work on my cross stitch and it's going to be a lot of fun. And so yeah, happy stitching. Bye.